Oh, oil won't come on. No, oil pressure is I guess it's low. I found it. Thermotex Ultra Grey. It seems to be the best stuff I've found lately. I've used others like black and a few other bits and pieces, but it says a sixteenth to a quarter inch, so two to six mil. You do not need to lay this on like cement. It doesn't need to be put there like uh, I've seen so much put of on this. I've put so much of this on before myself. That nozzle's cut, yeah, see teeny tiny. On a forty-five. Let's just get a little bit of squish out of the goo. I don't want to see it come oozing out. Just want to know that it's there. So that's all I'm looking for. Just a little bit of squish. This is me making sure it never leaks again. Now packaging says to leave that for an hour before putting torque on it. I'm going to leave it overnight and then put torque on it in the morning because I would like to get a little bit more compression out of that cork and that goo. And that's something I can worry about tomorrow. So let's do this Sunday coming now. So uh, got the motor sealed up on the weekend as you saw. Well, yeah. Probably leave that episode this long. And next time you'll see this in maybe. Maybe. Anyway. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Backyard Builds. So also we have um, King of the Hill coming up in October. It is the October long weekend. It is on the 1st of October. Should know that one. Uh, it's a vintage bike hill climb held out in Spring Range, which is about 25 minutes from Canberra. Not that far, it's about halfway between Canberra and Murrum Bateman, if you know the area. Uh, there's gonna be a show and shine on, so bring your cars, bring your bikes out. It's a great day for everyone and watch some wild old dudes and young dudes get loose on some vintage bikes harleys indians and the likes and it's pretty pretty good doing so make sure you get out to king of the hill uh check it out on instagram uh, and facebook they have a page it's cough which is just short for king of the hill so yeah make sure you get out there and view and enjoy the day So before I show you my sweet tool, I'm just going to give everything a good wipe down and brake cleaner because there is 
think we had a lot more grease on this than I thought. Maybe that's why the clutch slipped a little. Ooh. But, it'll be alright. Just using brake cleaner there, obviously. Now, I'm not going to touch the clutch itself. Bit of a funny wear pattern. You can probably see in the video, it's quite a sweet heat ring. <laughs> Before I pulled the ute into the shed, I was actually using it to try and snatch something out of my backyard that got stuck. Forklift. So it wasn't like it was anything light. <laughs> but it'll be right. So, put that back in there. This is my sweet tool. If you haven't seen one before, this is a clutch alignment tool, not a butt plug, despite the finger ring. All it does, fits in the splines of the clutch plate, fits in the back of the motor there, and just helps align everything. If I can leave that there without it falling off, grab the bolts, and wrong. Right. Get the tools ready, which I have now. Just used to locate up to the back of the motor. They're fairly expensive. That one's only made of plastic, so it doesn't have to be anything full on. And it's um, going to make my life, hopefully, a hell of a lot easier. Now, provided that sitting. Roughly center. Actually feels like it is. Pulls just out like that, clutches the line. Hopefully, in a minute, that's going to make everything 10 to a million times easier. Swing it, let's do it. Now, guys, I'm about to put this in the hole. I'm going to do this on my own. Normally, I would have the gearbox attached because I know it makes it a lot easier for me, but here I am. Normally I'd recommend having a friend around. I did have the option to have a friend around, but thought I'm just gonna get this done. Now, it could be tricky getting the dowels to line up, getting the clutch to line up. It's all gonna be a little bit fun, but um, here we go. That wasn't all shades of bullshit. Now I just gotta put the engine bolts in and it's dinner time, because I'm starving. First thing to go back on this motor, is that starter motor, because you cannot get it once the extractors are on. And I've got a little repair to do on the extractors that I'll show you in a minute. So, starter motor first. So, years ago when I actually had this motor built for me, Put a single carby on it and I wanted to put an O2 sensor in. This was purely for tuning. It is approximately 
12 inches, 10 inches from the last merge point. Problem is, I was lazy enough to uh, leave this in the car and never fully welded it. So, just going to quickly zap that up. Just clean it up, run a nice little bead over it with the TIG, and they can go back in the car. All right, the big glob has been re-globbed and now sealed and globbed. You can see there's a bit of fair wear leak here at some point. Fair wear will go on there. Fan and rad's back in. You will notice I'm running the Bluetooth belt set up for the alternator and the water pump. I'm actually gonna go get a new belt tomorrow, I think, because this 11A 890 is missing a tooth. It isn't actually looking too bad. Oh, it's missing two teeth. Yeah, might replace it either way. But I actually worked out, I need a slightly longer belt anyway. Um, just putting the top rad hose back on. These are notorious for getting stuck. This is a little trick my old man taught me back in the day. Um, it doesn't affect it at all, but if you ever need to pull it back apart, it makes it quite easy. Just get a little dab of grease. You can use Vaseline, I'm told as well. Just give it a, just give it a good twirl, you see, just give it a twist. Just like that. Yeah. Makes this going on easy because it goes bloop like that. And it goes plunk like that. But if you ever need to take these back off now, they're lubed up. So yeah, just a little little tech tip, a little bit of grease on your nipples, fellas. Use that information as you wish and how you so desire. talking about it feels slightly oily but it also feels slightly fuely like it's not I don't know you can see like it's all around the gasket maybe it was just an oil leak and it just got the gasket wet for the intake manifold to go on there i have not changed the carby on there yet i will do that once it's on the car to start getting fluids in here last night. He said it's this nice red bucket and my new seal on the water pump hasn't worked. So I need to pull that back off, clean it up, put a gasket on it. Uh. Alrighty viewers, it's actually been a couple of weeks since I actually got this back in and running. I've Still got a bit of blow by at the top and yes that does hit there you can see my greasy finger mark where i need to cut it but other than that it's actually been running pretty damn good um it seems to like four pound just a little bit better on the fuel pressure um i still seem to have a bit of a leak at the base of the thermostat I'm gonna put that down to that thermostat probably a million years old. And there was a bit of corrosion like on this bottom edge here. So I think that's where it's leaking from. Water pump seems to be sealed up. Sump seems to be sealed up, fuel pump sealed up. Obviously you've got new filters in there. I'm actually gonna change this. I'm gonna cut this line back a bit. So this is a straight run through here. This has been fine forever. 
but it's only recently I thought I'd better change that. Um, you can see there's a few drops of oil on the ground, and that's purely just what is dropping off the rock cover going around the back of the motor, etc. It obviously also gets pushed by this beautiful Chevrolet fan, so doesn't seem to be any other leaks apart from just a blow by at the top. Um, I opened the options for that because it only seems to be at high RPM at fucking excuse my French only seems to be at high RPM it gets blow by but I've also put a new starter motor in it because the starter motor died um, so that was the finest cheapest eBay one it was $110 and it seemed to be going great other than that it's actually been pretty good oh actually one viewer asked what sort of jets I've got in the carb this is a 48 DHLA Delorto. I had a 45 on there, but I was having issues with it. Um, I had to jet it way, way up, and it was still lean at top, and it was so fat at idle, it wasn't even funny. As for the jets, the idle jet is a 0.65, because Delorto's are made in Italy, so they're in um, metric measurements. Weber's are a little bit different. Um, so it's 0.65 idle, um, and it's a one, it's a 190 main jet. Um, what are the choke? Video cut short there, viewers. Phone went flat. But so this is what I've got. The starter emulsion is seven for a two point one. Starter jet is a seventy. Float is a seven two nine point nine eight point one. The height is set to 14.5 to 15. And these are the important ones. Main, air corrector is a 190. Emulsion tube is a 7772.8. And the jet is a 190, which is actually a drilled out jet. Um, and the low speed circuit emulsion is a 7850.2. We started with an 80 jet in there, which was drilled like a 56 drilled out to an 80. I've then swapped and put a 65 in there and it seems to be a lot happier. Um, what those are, so they have a, an idle and a main circuit, um, and trying to get this, the change from throttle from idle onto mains is always the downfall of side drive carbies. Um, but I seem to have it pretty good. It seem, still has a little bit of a rollover point, but it's not been too bad. Um, but yes. You can most definitely do it with a 45, it's just this motor needs more. It actually has a worked head on it. It flows about a potential of like 257 horsepower on a flow bench at, I think it was about 530 or 550 thou lift. Um, it's got a healthy cam in it, but yeah, I just found the 45 wasn't enough for it. 48 seems to be a lot better. I'm still yet to check the AFRs on it. Um, it still might want a bit more main jet in it, um, but we'll make that decision once I've thrown a gauge over it. Other than that, guys, she's ready to go. And she's been doing daily duties the last few weeks, so she's pretty happy otherwise. Um, apart from that little bit of blow-by over there. Curious if anyone's got any ideas on what's going on with this blow-by too. Seems to be just coming out of the rear. There is a baffle under the rear, like in the rocker cover. And this is just obviously a, a twist-in um, filter fill point neck the bonnet um i don't have i don't have the ability to put a pcv valve in there that's just a, a straight barb and then underneath um i welded in a plate that's got some fine steel wool um underneath it as well to act as a bit of a baffle but yeah i'm obviously still getting some blow by so i'm not sure what I'm, what's going on there um but yeah this is ready to go on an adventure this weekend which you'll see Maybe. And that about covers it. So yeah. Also, let me let me let me stop this.